It's time for another backend video, and in this one, we're going to take a look at the Piano app I made a few months back and add in recording capability so we can save songs that we create to a database and then share them with other people. Let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Now to get started, I have the original code from the piano video I did a few months back, open up in Visual Studio Code. And if you haven't seen that video, you can get the code down in the description below from GitHub, or you can watch the video, which I'll link up in the cards in the description down below. But anyway, you should have this code available, whether through GitHub or through that video. And on the right hand side, I have this code open. And as you can see, we have a piano, we can play with our keyboard, or we can actually play it by clicking. But also I have open over here, the final version of what we're gonna be building. It's the same piano, same buttons, everything works, but now we have a record button, so we can click record, play some notes. And when we finish clicking record, it'll play those notes back to us. We can play it as many times as we want. And we can also save this, which is actually going to give us a special link, as you can see up here, which is going to be the link for our song. We can share that with people, and it's always going to open up this piano, where the play button is going to play that song. And of course, we can go back and record a new song if we want to. So let's get started by transferring what we currently have over to a Express server so that we can actually do some fancy database stuff on the back end. So to do that, we need to just open up the command line here. And what we need to do is we need to type in npm init, and then we'll just put dash y. This is going to give us all the default values. That'll create this package.json file you see here. And then next, we need to install our dependencies for Express. So we'll say npm i. We're going to need Express. We're also going to need EJS to handle all of our views for rendering our application. And then we're going to need Mongoose, which is going to allow us to actually access the database in the background so we can save our songs to a database and have them persist forever. Also, we're gonna need a single dev dependency. This is just gonna be npm i dash dash save dev. And what we're gonna want is a dependency called nodemon, which is going to allow us to automatically refresh our site every single time that we make changes to our application. And as soon as that's done being loaded, we're gonna open up our package.json. You can see all of our dependencies we installed are here. And we also wanna add in a single script. We're just gonna call this dev start. And we want to run nodemon server, whoops, server.js. Make sure this is a period here. And what this is going to do is it's going to run our site using nodemon every single time that we refresh our application. It'll use nodemon to actually show those changes to us. So if we change our files, it'll automatically refresh for us. So now let's save that and get started organizing our files so that they're in the different places we need. So we're going to create a new folder. This first folder is going to be for our actual public files. So we're going to say public, and this is where things like our style sheets are going to go. So we'll drag our CSS up in there. Our JavaScript is going to go in there. And also all of our notes here, this is all of our different notes for the piano. All of these also need to be in our public folder, as you can see here. Next, we're going to move this index.html into a views folder. So let's create a new folder called views, and we'll drag index.html in there. And we need to rename this to .ejs. That way we can actually work with this using Node and Express. So now we have an ejs file here. And if we create a new file outside here called server.js, this is where all of our server code for setting up Express is gonna go. So let's first require those libraries we created. So we have Express is going to be require Express. And we need to get an app variable from that. So we'll say app equals Whoops, express, we just run that like a function. And then we can say app.listen, whoops, listen. And we need to pass it in the port we want to listen to. In our case, we'll just use port 5000 for now. And also what we wanna do is make sure that we have a single route set up, which is just going to be for our index page. So we're just gonna say for slash, which is just gonna be our index route. We're gonna have a request and a response variable. And inside of here, we just want to respond with our index. So we'll say render we want to render that index.ejs file just like this. And now if we save and we run npm run dev start, we hit enter, you should see it says that it started up our server. So if we go to localhost port 5000, so localhost port 5000, you'll see that we have no default view engine was specified. Let me just view that in. No default engine was specified. So what we need to do is say app.set 
and we want to set the view engine. And this is where that library EJS comes in. We're just going to set it to EJS. Now, if we save and refresh over here, you see that this is loading up, but we don't have actually anything showing up on our page. And the reason for this is it actually is loading our index.ejs file, but all of our style sheets here, which actually make our page look like this, makes all of our keys show up, makes our background show up, and all of our JavaScript, which makes things work, are not actually being loaded in. If we just inspect this page here, you see that we have a bunch of errors in our console, essentially saying it cannot find these resources for all of our different notes and all of our different public files. So we need to tell Express where all of these different public files are. And to do that, we can just say app.use, whoops, use, and we want to type in express.static, and in here we want to pass it the path to our static folder, which in our case we called that folder public. This is just where all of our assets, such as style sheets and JavaScript, are going to live. Now if we save and reload, you see that our piano is showing up, and if we type our keys, we can actually play our piano. So our application is essentially working exactly the same as it did before, but now we have an entire server backend we can use to hook up to a database and do a bunch of other fun things. Now, before we get started in doing all of this fun backend stuff with the database and saving our songs, we actually need to implement the ability to record and save songs into the front end first. So let's open up some of our front end files. We have our index.ejs here. We're also going to need our script.js and our stylesheets.scs. We'll just scroll down to the bottom here. And the first thing we need to do is just obviously add a button, which will allow us to start recording. So let's create a container. We're just going to call buttons, which is where we're going to put all of the different buttons. If you remember right, we had a bunch of different buttons we could click. We had like record, play, save. They're all going to live in this container. But first, we're going to create a button, which is going to have the class of record button, just like that. And let's also give it the class of BTN, so we can style all of our buttons almost exactly the same. And then we'll just put the text record inside of here. And if we save, you can see our record button is showing up right there. Obviously, this is not where we want this button to be. So let's jump into our style sheets here. And the first thing we want to do is go all the way up to our body. And if we change our flex direction to column, it'll allow us to stack everything on top of each other like that, which is what we want. And now we can actually select that container, which is called buttons. And we can select each individual button by saying button. And then we also have our record button, which we can select as well. So the first thing I want to select is this buttons class. This we just want to add a little bit of margin on the bottom. So we'll say margin bottom is 2 REM, gives us some space between our button and our piano. And also I'm going to change this to display of flex, just so that when we have more than one button in here, they're all going to show up on the same line. Now next, inside of our button class itself, let's work on styling our button. We're going to add some padding, so we'll say 0.5 REM and 1 REM. We're also going to remove our border from this, so we'll say border none, whoops, and we're going to go in here with the background, and instead of setting a specific background color, I'm actually going to use CSS variables combined with HSL in order to set a specific background color based on our variables. So we're going to have a specific variable for the hue of our color. We're also going to have a specific variable for the saturation of our button, and then lastly, we're just going to use 50% lightness for all of our buttons. So let's come in here and we're going to create some variables. So we have our hue variable, whoops, hue variable, and we're also going to have our saturation variable. And we'll just set our saturation to 100% by default, and we'll set our hue to 100. That'll give us a greenish color, as you can see over here, because by default, most of our buttons are going to be this green color, if you remember from this other example over here. Also, let's bump up the font size so this is easier for you to read. So we're just going to say font size is going to be 2 REM. And we'll also add a little bit of margin on the left hand side of our button. We'll just say one REM. And this margin on the left, the reason we're adding this is so that when we have multiple buttons in our container, they actually have some space out from each other. But we don't want our first button to have this. So we're going to say the first child that is a button, we want the margin on the left to be zero, just so the first one isn't moved over by that margin. And the margin only shows up on all the buttons after so that they have that spacing but we don't want the extra spacing at the beginning. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to inherit our color. Whoops, inherit our color down. This is because some of our buttons are actually going to be links, and we want to make sure our link color is inherited. And also, we're going to remove text decoration, because if you remember right, anchor tags, which are links, they actually have that underline. We don't want that. And then lastly, we'll use that pointer cursor for our button, as you can see here. 
but our record button is going to be slightly different than the rest of our buttons because we want this to actually be this reddish color when we are recording and this gray color when we're not. As you can see, we have gray and when we click, it turns to this red color and when we click again, that red color goes away. So for our record button, what we want to do is we want to set our hue here to be zero. This will give us that red color. And we also want to set our saturation to 0%, which is going to give us a gray color. But when our record button has a class of active, which means that we are actively recording, I want to change our saturation. Whoops, saturation. And I want this to be 100%. So now if we go back into our index.ejs and we add a class, whoops, of active onto this, we're going to get that red color for our record, which is exactly what we want. Now all we need to do is just add in some nice hover effects on our button. So when we hover it, it's easy to tell that it's clickable. So inside of our styles, let's select our button on the hover state. And we'll also do this for our focus as well. And all I want to do is select our background whoops, color. We already know what our hue and everything is going to be. So we'll use the exact same hue from our variable. And we're also going to use the same saturation. So we'll say saturation here. And we just want to drop down our lightness to about 30%. That's about 20% darker. And now when we hover the button, you see it's going to just darken that color for us. This isn't the most visually pleasing CSS styles, but the point of this video is more on the back end of things, how we do the saving. So you are more than welcome to make this look better, but for now it's just gonna stay this ugly gray color. So now with that out of the way, those are the basic styles we're gonna need for our different buttons. So let's move on to the JavaScript inside of our front end to work on how we can actually record these songs. So the first thing we're going to need is to actually get our button. So we're going to say record button. Whoops, make sure that's a capital B just so it's easier to read. We're going to set this to document.query selector. And we want to get the button that has the class of dot record button. And now what we have that record button, we can actually set up some event listeners on it. So let's just scroll down here a little ways. We'll say record button dot add event listener. And we want to add an event listener for when we click on this button. And all we want to do when we click on this button is to actually toggle our recording. So we'll call a function, which is toggle recording. And instead of actually creating a function, which calls a function, we can just pass our toggle recording function here to our add event listener. And that's going to do the exact same thing as what we just typed out. It's just easier to read, easier to write. So let's create that function. It's going to be toggle recording and inside this function we just need to add that active class or remove it based on if we are or are not recording so in order to do that we just want to say record button dot class list this is going to give us all of the classes and we just want to toggle a class which in our case is active so this now when we click on our button is going to make it turn red and when we click it again it's going to go down to this gray color that's exactly what we want now also that we have our toggle recording set up we want to have some more code in order to start our recording and to stop our recording. So let's say if we are recording, so we'll create a function called is recording, and we'll define that in a little bit. So if we are recording, then we want to start our recording. So we'll just say start recording. And again, this is going to be a function that we'll recreate. Else, if we're not recording, then we want to stop our recording. And we're again going to make this a function just so our code is easier to read. So the first function we want to create is our function for is recording. And inside of this function, we want to check our recording button. And if our recording button exists and it has a class of active, we'll return true. So we'll say return our recording, whoops, our record button is not equal to null. So that means that we have a record button and, whoops, and if our record button dot class list dot contains active, so if our record button has the class active and our record button exists, this is going to be true. So is recording will be true. Otherwise, if those conditions aren't meant, it'll be false and we'll call stop recording. So now we can create our functions for start and stop recording. We'll do the start one first. And in this function, we're going to need to set up some variables so that we know how to record our song. And now instead of recording the actual raw audio of our song, which is going to be long, lengthy, and take up a lot of server space, we're actually going to use a little bit of a trick to record just the time that the note is played as well as what note the person clicks on. So every time that someone plays a note, we're gonna mark the time that this note is played as well as what note was played. And from that information, we can recreate the entire song. So in order to get the time that the note is played, 
we want to use a variable, which is just going to be the start time. So we're going to take a start time, which is when we click record, that's going to be our current time. And then when they click a key, it's going to give us a new time. And if we subtract the time from when they clicked on a key to the time that we started recording, that'll give us an offset for how long from the beginning of the song this note was pressed. So we're going to have a variable which is called recording start time. We're going to set that to date.now. Essentially, this is the current time. And we want this to be a global variable. So we're just going to define this all the way up here. We're going to say let recording start time is going to just be here. It's just going to be defined as nothing. So we don't actually need to give it a default value. And then also, we're going to need another variable. This is going to be for our song notes. And this is just going to be an empty array. And again, this is a global variable. So let's just scroll all the way up here and we'll create a variable called song notes. And we'll just declare this again as nothing. So now we have the start time, and this is going to be when we start our recording, and we have the array of all of our different notes that we're going to fill in whenever we actually click on a key to play a note. So now in our stop recording, we're going to have our function, which is called stop recording. In here, we will obviously want to just stop our recording, and we want to play back that song to the user. So we're going to call a function here, which is play song. And for now, this function is just going to print out our current song. So we'll say play song. And inside of here, we're just going to console.log our song notes, just so we can see what this looks like as we play our song. And now, whenever we're in this play note function, we want to have a check. We want to say if is recording. So if we're in the current process of recording, then we want to record our note. So we're going to call a function called record note, and we actually need to pass it the note we're playing. Luckily, this key.dataset.note is going to give us the exact note that we're playing. So we'll pass that into this function. And now we can create the function record note, and it's going to take in a note. And all we need to do is take our song notes array. We're going to push in a new object, and this object is going to have a note, which we're just going to denote as our key that we're playing, which is going to be from this note we passed in. And it's also going to have a start time, which is essentially when we actually clicked on the key and remember, I said we want to get the current time, which is, as we know, date.now. And we want to subtract that from when we started our recording. So we'll say recording start time, just like that. And now if we save, we should hopefully be able to record a song. And when we're done, it's going to print it out to us. So if we click this record button, click some keys like this, and then stop our recording. If we inspect our page, Go to our console, we get an array here, as you can see, with our keys, C, D, C, D, which is what we played, as well as the start time in milliseconds. So after 778 milliseconds, I played the first note, and then about a second, I played the second note. So a second from when I clicked record is the second note. A second and a half after I clicked record, I played the third note. And then almost two seconds later, after the record button, I played the fourth note. So now we have all of our notes, as well as the time between when we played each of those notes, so now we can actually play those notes back to us. So in order to do that, we need to create a function which is going to allow us to play the song. Right now we're just printing out our notes, but we want to actually take those notes and play them back to us. And luckily we have this convenient play note function where if we pass it a note, it'll play it for us. So we just need to offset based on the time of each of our notes and call this function. So let's come in here and we're just going to loop through all of our song notes. But first, we want to check if we actually have any song notes. So we can say if our song notes.length is equal to zero, we just want to return. Essentially, if we don't have any songs, just return out and don't actually play the song. But if we do have songs inside of here, we want to loop through all of our different song notes. So we'll just say for each, and we're just going to call this our note. And for each one of our notes, we want to use set timeout, which is going to allow us to wait a certain amount of time in milliseconds and then call a function. So let's define our function. And then the second parameter here is how long we want to wait. And this is just going to be note.startTime. If you remember, that's what we actually saved inside of our song notes. So now we're just setting a timeout to play this function here. We're going to call this function after we wait this amount of time. And in this function, we want to call play note and we want to pass it our note. But unfortunately, this play note function actually takes a key and not a note. So we need to get the individual key, which in our case up here is an element on our page up here. We need to be able to convert a note to a key. So let's actually set up a new variable, which is going to be our key map. We're just going to call it key map. And this is going to be a conversion from our notes all the way to our keys here. 
So what we want to do is we want to take our keys and loop over them. So we'll say keys and we want to actually reduce. So this, this allows us to do is actually take this array and do some operations on it and return a new object. In our case, we want to turn an object, which is mapping our notes to our keys. So what this is going to take is a parameter, which is first our map, and then the second parameter, which is each one of our individual keys. And if you're not super familiar with this reduce function, I have a video covering it, which I'll link in the cards and the description down below. And the second parameter to reduce is our starting point, and we want to start off with an empty map, essentially an empty object. And all we want to do is for each one of our keys, we want to map our key.dataset.note. This is the individual note for our key, and we want to map that to our key. And then we just return, whoops, return our map. So now this key map variable is going to be an object that looks something like this. We're going to have a key, which in our case, let's say is our note of C, and we're going to map that note of C to an individual key. So like maybe it'll be the first key in our array. And then we're going to have another element, which is going to be our another note, which is going to be maybe key of one. So now we can actually just call something like key map with C. And this is going to give us that key for that note. So now if we scroll all the way down here in our play song function, we can use the key of our note and actually pass that to this key map. So we can say key map of note dot key, which if we remember is either a letter C, D or whatever. And this will give us the individual key for that note that we pressed. So now if we set up everything properly, after we click this record button, play a song and click record again, it should play that song back to us. So let's just come over here click record, and you'll notice this is actually not working. So we must have some form of error. If we go to our console, you see we get an uncaught type error, keys.reduce is not a function. Let's scroll all the way up here. And the reason for that is document.querySelector all doesn't actually return an array, it returns this array-like object. So we can't call reduce. What we need to do is actually just destructure this. We'll just spread out our keys into a new array. And essentially we're converting this keys array, which is not really an array, into a proper JavaScript array, which allows us to use reduce. So now if we click on record, you can see we can record some notes. And when we unclick record, you see it's gonna play those notes back to us. So that way we can see what we've actually recorded. And that's pretty much all of the JavaScript we're gonna to need to work on right now in order to get working on our backend. But we do need to add in buttons that are going to allow us to play the song as well as allow us to save the song. So let's add those buttons into our index.ejs. We'll just copy this record button down. We're gonna have a play button, and we're also going to have a save button. This one will just say play, and this one is going to say save. So if we save that, you can see we have our play and our save button here. And of course, by default, we want these buttons to not show up because we don't have a song to play when we first load our page. So inside of our styles, let's select our play button, and we're gonna select our save button, and by default, we're gonna set the display to none. And we're also going to select the play button, but when we give it a class of show, we want to show it. And we're gonna do the same thing with our save button. So we'll say save button dot show. And in here, we're just gonna change the display to block. So now, as you can see, the buttons do not show up, but if we add a class of show, for example, to our play button, you can see it shows up. So now in our JavaScript, Whenever we're done recording, so whenever we stop recording, we want to actually show these buttons. So we're going to say, whoops, first, we probably want to make sure we have these buttons selected. So we're going to have our play button equal to document.querySelector. And we want to select, whoops, that class of play button. Let's just copy this down, same exact thing, but for our save button. Now in our stop recording, we can say play button dot class list dot add and we want to add the show class and we'll do the exact same thing for our save button. But when we start recording, we want to make sure we hide those buttons. So we're going to just instead remove the class show from both our play and our save button. So now if we click record, record something, you can see our buttons pop up. And if we click record again, you can see the buttons disappear and then show back up when we click record. So now all we have left to do is hook up our play button. So it actually plays our song again. It'll just call play song and also our save button, which is gonna be where we integrate the backend to actually save these songs to our database. So let's just hook up some event listeners, scroll all the way up to the top. We're gonna to do our save button dot add event listener. And we wanna, of course, add this on click. And we wanna call a button called save song. 
and this is going to be a function we'll create later. And we're also going to do our play button dot add event listener. And we want to call this on click and we want to call a function called play song, which we've already created. So now if we create our save song function, we'll just put it all the way down here, function save song. We're going to implement this in just a little bit, but if we save, click record, play our song, you can see it'll play back to us. And when we click the play button, you can see it'll also play back to us. So we know that this is working. So now all we have left is this save song function. And before we implement this on the front end, we actually need to implement this on the back end so we can actually call one of our endpoints. So let's create an app.post. And this app.post is going to be to a endpoint called songs. And this is where we're going to post for our new songs. And it's going to take a request and a response. And inside of this post, we're going to post something to the body, which is going to be our request.body. And this is actually going to be called song notes. So essentially that variable we saved here of our song notes, we're just going to push that up to our server exactly as it is from our front end. And in order to access our body like this, since we're going to be passing it in JSON, we need to say app.use express.json. And this is just saying that we are using JSON inside of our application so we can access it from our request.body. So now that we have these song notes on the server, how exactly are we going to save them to our database? Well, to do that, we need to hook up our database. So let's come in here and we're going to use that mongoose library, which we installed at the beginning of the video. And we're going to hook this mongoose library up to a local database. And if you don't already have MongoDB installed on your computer, I have a video telling you how to do it up in the cards and in the description down below. So make sure you check that out. But once you have that set up, you can call mongoose.connect and we just want to pass it a URL to a local database. You could also use a database that hosted in the cloud if you wanted. But for our example, we're just going to use a local MongoDB database, which is just going to have a URL like this. And then it's going to be localhost slash, and we just want to pass in the name of our database. We're just going to call it song recorder, because this is just going to record songs for us. And with this single line right here, we're now connected to our database, but we're going to run into some errors. If we save this, you see, we get deprecation warnings. We need to pass in use new URL parser true. So let's pass that in as an option right here. And we're also saying use unified topology set to true as well. And now with both of those passed in, when we save, you can see we're no longer getting those errors being printed out to the console. So now we're properly connected to our database. The next thing to do is to set up a new uh, folder here, which we're just going to call models. And in here, we're going to create a new file, which is just song.js. This is where we're going to store all of our song information and is our database model. So let's first require mongoose. So we'll say mongoose equals require mongoose. And with mongoose, we can actually set up a schema. So we can say mongoose.schema, and we want to create a new schema. And this first schema is going to be for our song. So we'll say const song schema is going to be equal to this new schema here. And inside of the schema, all we need to have is a single array of all of our notes. So we're just going to say notes, and this is going to be equal to an array. But in order to define what this actual array is set to, we want to create a new schema. We're just going to call this our note schema. And now we can use mongoose to create that note schema. So we can say const note schema is equal to new mongoose.schema. And in here, we can define what each one of our individual notes look like. If you remember, we have a key, which in our case is just a string. So we can set the type to string and required to true because each individual note is going to have a key. And here we're also going to have a start time. So we'll say start time, and this is going to have a type, which is a number, because you remember, it's just the number of milliseconds. And we're also going to have this required of true. So now we have our individual note schema and our song schema, which is composed of an array of notes. And we can actually just module.export this out. And we can create this and link it to our database by using mongoose.model. And all we do is pass the name of our collection, which in our case, we're just going to call this songs and then we can pass it our schema, which in our case is our song schema. So now if we save, we have this model, which we can use to create a new song. So inside of our server, we can import that, which is just song, which is equal to require dot slash models. So this will allow us to access our models. And then we can just say song.js. This is a path to our individual song and make sure we spell this as required. So now when we save, 
refresh this, you can see everything's working as before. So now down here, we can access song and we can create a new one by just saying new song, pass it in here, and we want our notes to be equal to our request.body.song notes. This is just an array of our notes. So now we have a song which is equal to that variable that we just created here of a new song. And in order to save this song, we could just call song.save. And this is actually an asynchronous function. So let's make sure this is an async function so that we can await our song.save. And then all we want to do is just return the result. So we can say res.json of our song. This is so that we can actually get the idea of our song so we can link to it later. But for now, all we're doing is just returning the song to the user and saving it to our database at this slash songs. But since we know that we're going to be getting our ID back, let's create a new route that will allow us to access a song by ID. So we'll say app.get. This is going to be at slash songs slash ID. So colon ID. This is just a dynamic variable we pass to our route. And this again, we're going to make an async function with request and response, just like that. And inside of here, we want to get our song based on our ID. And this is in request.params.id. That'll be this ID we pass in our URL here. So what we can do is we can create a variable called song. And then inside of a try catch, what we want to do is actually try to get that song. So we'll try try catch, which is going to have an error here. And inside the try portion, we can say song.findById, and we can pass it in that request.params.id from down here, just like that. So this is going to access our database and try to get a song. And since it's asynchronous, we need to await that. And we can set our song variable equal to what we get from this. But if this for some reason fails to find a song, we can't actually get a song, we want to just set our song equal to undefined here. And then what we can do is actually render out our index page. So we can say res.render our index, but we're going to pass it in our song just like that. So now we're passing our current song down to our index page like this. So now with all of that set up, we pretty much have our entire server done. So let's just save this. And the last thing we need to do is in our index.ejs, we need to import the library, which we're going to use to call our server. And I just have copied this over from cdn.js. Our library is called Axios. If you just search for Axios, you'll be able to find this link, just Axios CDN. And we just want to make sure we defer the loading of this Axios library. This will just make it easy for us to actually query the backend in our server.js from our script.js. And now with that set up, we can use this Axios variable. We can call axios.post, which will post to a specific URL, which in our case we know is going to be songs. So we can just say here slash songs, which is that same route that we have here inside of our server. And then we just want to pass it the data we're passing up, which we know is going to have the key of song notes and our local variable is called song notes. And this is a asynchronous function. It's going to return a promise. So we'll just say dot then. And inside of this dot then we're going to have a response. And this response is going to have all of our data inside of it. So if we say res dot data, this is going to be our song. And if we want the ID, we just need to use underscore ID, and that'll give us the ID of our song that we just created. So we can say console.log that res.data, and we'll just actually log out the whole data, not just the ID. So now if we record a song, click on the keys, click record, and then we click this save function here, and we inspect our console, you can see that we're getting printed out an object which has the underscore ID, which is the new ID we created, as well as the notes that we just created inside of our database. So now we have all of this saved to our database. We have the individual ID of our song, and we have a route in our server which takes the ID of a song and will give us that song inside of our index. So now let's create a new button, and this button is going to be for viewing the song, and we can do that in our index.ejs. So right down here, we can create a button, but in our case, we're going to use a link because links are used for linking two different pages. And we want this link to have an href, which is going to go to our new song. For now, we'll just leave it blank because we're going to actually define this inside of our JavaScript. So we'll just leave this href here as just a blank href. And then we're also going to treat this just like our buttons. So we're going to give it a plat class here, a button, and a class of song leak. And it's just going to say view song and if we save, you can see that view song button has showed up right here, but it's actually a link instead of a button. Now, in order to style this properly, we want to add some margin on the bottom. And that margin is going to be the same margin that we used up here. 
So we can just say here, we want to also select that song link that gives us that extra margin that we want. And of course, by default, we want this to be hidden. So we'll just come up here and just like our other buttons, we want song link to be display none. And we only want it to show up when we give it the class of show. So we'll say song link dot show. Let me just format that. There we go. So now it's hidden by default. And the only time we want this to show up is whenever we're done saving a song. So let's go all the way up here where we have our button selectors and we want to select our song link button. So we'll say song link button is going to be song, whoops, link button, just like that. So now we actually have a selector for our song link button. And actually it doesn't even have button at the end. So let's make sure we remove that and remove this here just so our selector is correct. So we have our song link. We scroll all the way down here. We can take our song link take our class list and we can add in that show class list and we can also set the href. So we can say song link dot href and we can set that href here equal to slash songs since we know it's going to be from slash songs and then we want our ID, which in our case is res dot data dot underscore ID and we don't actually need to log out that anymore. So now we're taking our song link, showing it and setting the href to whatever song we just created. So now if we save, click on record, play our song, and we unrecord. As soon as we click save, you can see our view song button has showed up. And when we click this, it's gonna bring us to a new URL of songs and it has the ID at the end. And that's exactly what we want, but you'll notice immediately none of our style sheets or JavaScript are being persisted. So in our index.ejs, let's make sure at the beginning of our scripts, we have a slash just like this. Same thing with our styles, that'll make those show up. And in order to make our notes work, we need to do the same thing. We just need to put this slash symbol at the very beginning of all of our lines here. So let's just go down to all of our lines and add that. Almost done there. And this is just so we can actually play all of our notes no matter what page we're on. And now everything should be working. We can play songs just like normal. But instead of having this record button, all we want to do is actually have our play button. And we also want to take the song that we're getting from our server here and use that inside of our JavaScript. So the first thing we'll work on is using that song in our JavaScript. We'll create a new scripts tag here. And inside this script tag, we're going to just set a variable for our current song. So we'll say current song is going to be equal to, and in order to actually parse out our JSON as actual JSON, we can use this hyphen symbol right here. And anything inside of these brackets is going to just be returned as normal JavaScript or normal HTML. So what we can do is we can say json.stringify. So this is going to convert our JSON to a string. And then this hyphen is going to convert that string back to normal JSON. So we can get our song, which is just locals.song. This is the song from our server that we passed in right here. So we're getting that song and we're converting it to a JSON object here and saving it to our current song variable inside of our JavaScript. And if we save this, go into our script and just anywhere at the very top here, we just print out console.log current song. And I come over here and inspect. You should see in our console, we have a new object and this object has our notes. And as you can see, we have each one of our individual notes with our key and our start time saved in that current song variable. So now with that information, we can actually set our song notes to be that. So we can say current song and current song dot notes. And this is just some fancy notation that's saying, if we have a current song, then we wanna get our current song.notes and save it to our song notes. It's essentially the same thing as doing this syntax, but it's a little bit easier to write out and a little bit more concise. So we're just gonna go with this and syntax instead. So now our current song notes are saved into our song notes. So the only thing left for us to do is just to make sure that by default, we're hiding this record button and showing our other buttons that we want, for example, our play song button. So in our index.ejs, we can come into our buttons here. And the first thing we wanna do is just have a little if statement that says if our locals.song. So essentially, if we have a current song, what we wanna do is not actually show our record button. So we'll just indent this in here and we'll say end. And what we wanna do, whoops, not end, I'm sorry, this should just be closing bracket. So if we do not have a song, so if locals.song equals null, then we show our record button. 
Otherwise, what we want to do if this locals.song is not equal to null, we want to have a button which will take us back to the actual page for recording a song. So we can just create here an A tag, and this A tag is just going to bring us back to our index where we can normally record songs. We're going to give it a class, whoops, a class of button, and we can say record new song. This will just bring us back to our original page for recording a new song. And as you can see, if we click that button, it brings us back to our normal local host. We can record a song. Also, we want this play song to actually show up if we do have a song. So inside of this class, we can say that we want to have a simple if statement in here. We want to say if local dot song is not equal to null, then we want to return a class of show. Otherwise, if it is, we just want to return an empty string. And then we make sure that we close that off here. And this may be a little bit confusing to read at first, but essentially, if we have a song, we want to show our play button by default. Otherwise, we just don't show it. And as you see, we have an error. That's just because this should be a colon instead of a question mark. And now if I save, you can see our record new song button and our play song button are here. And if we actually click play, you can see that nothing actually happens and it should be playing our song. So let's inspect and see what error we're getting. If we go to our console, it says uncaught type error, cannot read property at event listener of null. And if you remember right, if we go to our script, at the very top here, we add in an event listener for our record button. But now we're no longer showing our record button. So let's just add a simple if record button, then we want to add the event listener. So if we have a record button, we add an event listener. And let's just do the same thing for our save button, because we also want to hide this if we don't actually have a save button. So in our index.ejs here, we're just going to move our save button up into this locals up here, because we only want to show save if we don't have a song already recorded. We don't want to allow someone to overwrite a currently existing song. So let's save this, save this, and now when we click play, you should see our song playing, and there you go, you saw that our song that we recorded just played back. So now we have the ability here to actually play back songs that we've previously recorded. We can go back, we can record a new song, click record, and of course you can see we have an error. So something else is broken. Let's inspect our page, and it says uncaught syntax, unexpected end of input, and reference error current song is not defined. So what's happening here is a little bit confusing, but if we go to our index.ejs and scroll up, our json.stringify of locals.song is returning essentially undefined because there is no song that we have defined on our index page. So what this JavaScript outputs is const current song equals and then nothing. There's nothing here at all. We want this to actually have a string of undefined. So in order to do that, we can just say or in a string we put undefined. Because if this stringify outputs null or undefined, essentially if we don't have a song, we want the text undefined to be set to current song, which will give us this output down here. Now if we save, you can see that error has gone away, and we should be able to record a song, click some keys, click record, it'll play back for us just as before, and now we can click save, and we can view our song and play it, and this will play back the song that we just recorded. And that's all there is to creating this dynamic audio recorder in JavaScript. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other backend projects linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.